All right, this is from uh, that ass is my boss, who should be a almost a CU podcast Q and A Hall of Famer at this point. Uh, yeah. net co- correspondent. He can correspondent. be. He can be um, correspondent. He he can man the uh, bureau wherever he. Uh... I almost feel like yeah. If we eventually uh, do the show on Twitch or whatever, they'll be like the, they'll have like a sticker by their name, a special star yeah. or something. <laughs> As retro games become more expensive, do you think more collectors are turning to the homebrew market for new original content? And do you think there is much overlap between retro and homebrew collectors, or are they essentially two different markets? Hmm. Um, <clears throat> it's a good question, but I, I honestly think it's. I don't, think it's, I don't think it's two markets. I do. But I'll let you go first. Well, not necessarily. I, I feel like... How would I put this? Retro gamers are not always going to be interested in homebrew. But I feel like people who are into homebrew are already going to have some interest in retro gaming. Well, sure, because that's the console they're playing the homebrew on. Yeah. yeah um, so that's where the overlap is. Um, as retro games become more expensive, do I think more collectors are turning to homebrew? Not necessarily, just because physical releases of homebrew can be expensive as well. Um, and you have to look at whether or not, you know, the person who's created, you know, X, Y, or Z homebrew has, you know, permitted for it to be flashed to carts to be played for free or things like that. I think homebrew is getting more popular and more interesting, though, as people are no longer finding, um, you know, as many gems. At some point, out of, you know, 750 plus NES games, there's, uh, you know, the hidden gem videos have to stop, guys. I mean, we've, 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 dug, up all the, we've dug up all the jewels. So now it's interesting to see... My book ruined it. it it's interesting to see new new material being made for these systems. So I think there is some excitement that way to see new games for these old systems. But, but I, there's I don't... so many games that most people haven't played that well, it's we're, we're, we're anomalies when it comes to the retro gamer. Sort of typical the retro gamer hasn't played more than 60 or 70 NES games at most. And there's a lot of shit that they can still go out and play via emulator or a flash cart. So I think when you look at the time you have versus what's out there, you're never going to play every retro game. You're never going to play every every good retro game that ever exists. And a lot of the homebrews, or I should say a lot, some of the homebrew games don't stack up to even the, the average games from 30, 40 years ago. They just don't. So I, I can't see if you're looking for actual gameplay value, go rediscover games that you haven't played or play some game that you've never picked up that exists. And a lot of them are cheap if you want the real cartridge. It goes back to there's a lot of NES games that cost three dollars that are good. Yeah, it's true. I mean, in homebrew, nice. a lot of it is kind of about a, a community as well. Yes, you know, that, you want to see what other people are, are. You know, there's a celebration. Oh, I made this game. You know, and I'm making this, and yeah, I mean, there's a lot of fun in that aspect of it. So, I mean, in that way, a lot of times it, it's it is about the game, but it's also about just swapping tricks and stuff with other people that you're talking to. But no, I don't. I don't think the price of retro games becoming expensive or, or whatever has anything to do with people turning towards no, homebrew. No, because if you want to play the game, you'll emulate it. I mean, that's just the bottom line. I think I think I mean, homebrew is... There's a reason you have all these shitty Facebook ads popping up with all-in-one little fucking retro devices that have ROMs on them illegally. I mean, people buy them. Yeah. It goes back to the, goes back to the carts that got shut down by Nintendo in the, you know, in the 90s with their all-in-one out for view with all the eight, 18 different versions of Contra on it. I mean, people always want to play retro games in some fashion or another, they don't necessarily care how they do it. Yeah. You know, but homebrew, yeah, the homebrew is important. Obviously it's great with the NES maker. It'll be easier. You know, <laughs> we'll do, we'll do that little shout out for, for Joe there. But yeah, I do my personal opinion. I think they are two totally different markets in, in my opinion, from what I've seen, you have certain people that want to collect every single homebrew game or get a bunch of them. And the majority don't give a shit or just like, yeah, they're cool. Oh but, no, I agree with you yeah. in that regards. I thought, okay. Oh, we do agree. Yeah. We agree, Ian. We agree. 